Colombia-Israel relations have remained strong for years until President Gustavo Petro, who recently cut off ties with Israel and has announced plans to open an embassy for Palestinians in Ramallah in response to the Gaza war. But not all of Colombia's government agrees with this anti-Israel stance and certainly not its people. Joining us is the director of the New Liberalism Party, Juan Manuel Galán Pachón. Mr. Pachón, thank you so much for joining us today. To start, I would love to hear from you how you view the current state of diplomatic relations between Colombia and Israel. Well, we have a long relationship of uh, friendship and cooperation with Israel. We have a free trade agreement signed with Israel. We have cooperation in security matters, especially intelligence and all the communications that the army uses in Colombia and the police force are Israeli. Also, the strategic national air defense, the airplanes that we use in Colombia are uh, from Israel. So this relationship uh, goes back uh, decades. So we have an interest in Colombia to uh, maintain this relationship. And most Colombians didn't understand the decision that President Gustavo Petro took of cutting uh, diplomatic relations with Israel. It is a bad decision, not only for Colombians, because we are now less secure in Colombia because of these decisions, because of what I just said about the cooperation in security, but we are also not enhancing the possibility of peace in the Middle East. We need to have a close relationship if we want to uh, move forward in a peace accord in between the Arab world and Israel. Now, as a close friend of Israel and as someone who could potentially take over the presidency yourself one day, what would your vision be for the future of Colombian-Israel relations? And how would you address the concerns of those in Colombia who might oppose closer relations with Israel? Well, first of all, I will reestablish diplomatic relations with Israel. I think uh, our uh, foreign policy should be a state policy, not a governmental policy, and even less uh, something that decides the president by himself. And also uh, the vision that we have to enhance is not only uh, restraining the cooperation to security, but we have to move forward to other matters of the cooperation. For instance, uh, innovation, research, development, startups, management of water, uh, technology, access to internet and connectivity, we could learn a lot from Israel and its experience, and that would benefit the majority of Colombians. Now, what are your thoughts on the regional security challenges in the region, such as the threat of the Islamic Republic? How should Colombia position itself regarding these issues? Well, I think we share the vision uh, put forward by President Biden about uh, normalizing relations with Saudi Arabia. I think Saudi Arabia is a key actor on a sustainable peace between the Arab world and Israel. Also, initiatives like the uh, negotiation strategic initiative between Israeli and Palestine uh, where Sergio Jaramillo, who was uh, one of the negotiators of the peace accord between the FARC and the Colombian state, uh, it's a good way, a good path to move forward towards peace. And to understand also that Israel is not only fighting Hamas, Israel is fighting Hezbollah in the south of Lebanon, is fighting the Shia in Iraq and in Iran, is also the Houthis in Yemen. So it's a multiple front war that Israel is trying to uh, conduct. And, and one thing that worries me a lot is the increase of anti-Semitism in uh, not only in Colombia, but in many countries in Latin America, we are seeing uh, a lot of uh, in incidents of aggression, violence, uh, uh, moved by anti-Semitism speech. And I worry that our president, Gustavo Petro, is promoting this sentiment of anti-Semitism in Colombia. You are here on a private tour here in Israel. What have you seen and what lessons or insights do you hope to bring back to Colombia from your visit here? 
Well, uh, I had the opportunity to meet not only with the government officials in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but also with the families of the kidnapped. Uh, oh, we have a Colombian citizen that is among the hostages, and we met uh, his wife, uh, Rebecca, which uh, is uh, quite uh, worried about the situation of his husband, and we're trying to support her, expressing our support for her situation. Also, we met uh, with companies on technology, with companies on quantum computing, on also water management, on mobility and security for smart cities. Uh, you know, my brother, Carlos Fernando Galani, is the current mayor of Bogota, and and I think our party that has more than 58 mayorships in the whole country, we can help all our mayors of strengthened cooperation at the regional and local level. I know it is very difficult right now with the national government to have uh, cooperation, but with the regional governments between cities, uh, sister cities, for example, initiatives like that can help strengthen at that level our relationship. But my impression is that this is a country with a, a deep uh, sentiment of nation. Uh, you don't see anywhere in the world that uh, you have a war and people start coming back to Israel for many parts of the world. That's what happened in, in, after October 7th. And that reflects uh, for my country of this sentiment of nation, of uh, solidarity. For instance, the square where you have all the display on solidarity for the hostages and their families, it's an example for the world and it's an example for my own country. Absolutely. Mr. Pachon, thank you so much for joining us today. Muchas gracias. Thank you for being here and for all you do. Thank you very much for you.